C6H12O, and we want to draw ketones only. So remember, a ketone must have an R group surrounding a central carbon and another R group. And I never calculate the unsaturation index or whatever. I just sketch out um, something and see if it's correct. So I'll show you what I mean. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's six carbons, and I don't know. Let's just put a make a ketone out that second carbon. So let's count the carbons. Okay, so we've got one oxygen, six carbons, and let's count the hydrogen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I would say that this is correct. What that means is that the ketone is going to be acyclic. No rings, no rings, no double bonds, no triple bonds, just a simple carbons, and the only double bond is going to be the carbon-oxygen pi bond. Okay, now the ketone could be at carbon three as well okay so what I'm drawing here are all of the ketones that have six carbons in the longest chain you might be thinking well what about if we have a ketone at carbon 4 well be careful that's a repeat of the very first structure I did that has the ketone at carbon 2 okay so we don't want to draw that so there's only two molecules here with six carbons in the longest chain Let's go ahead and name those before we move on. The name of this would be hexan 2 own Now for ketones, you do have to indicate a number for where a ketone is located. And you can see why, because down here, this is hexan 3 own Moving on, let's draw all of the molecules that might have five carbons in the longest chain. So we got one, two, three, four, five carbons, okay? So that's gonna be our template. Let's, let's draw that like a bunch of times. Okay. Now, we can position the ketone in one of two possible locations. We cannot position it at carbon 1 because that would be an aldehyde. We can't position it at carbon 5 because that's an aldehyde. So we could position the ketone at carbon 2 or carbon 3. Or carbon 3. So um, let's do carbon 3. So those are definitely different isomers, okay? And then so this is going to generate a few possibilities and this might, okay? So now from here, we want to add the additional sixth carbon in the form of a methyl group. The methyl group can't be added here because that would make, you know, hexanthrione. It could be added here or here. It cannot be added here because that would make the original molecule uh, that I have on the top left of this slide. So we have two possibilities. We could add it here or we could add it here, okay? So, let's name these before we lose track of what we're doing here. So we number the longest chain, okay? There's gonna be a methyl group at carbon three. So this is three methyl pentan two own, okay? This is gonna have a similar name, except it's gonna be four methyl Pentan uh, two own okay, and I generated those two names from this template, realizing that there's five carbons in the longest chain. All right, now down here we also have five carbons in the longest chain, but the ketone is positioned on carbon three, so these are going to be pentan three owns, and I have one additional carbon I need to add to satisfy the molecular formula. So I can do that by adding it here, which is the same thing as adding it here because of the symmetry in the molecule, okay? So what that's going to give me is a single molecule that I can possibly draw. And it's gonna look like this, all right? Let's name this molecule. Let's number the longest chain. This is gonna be 2-methyl. and it's going to have the name pentan 
three owned, okay? The next possibility is to have four carbons in the longest chain. Okay, so we're dealing with much shorter things. And using this as a template, there's only one place I can put the ketone, and that's gonna be a carbon uh, two, which would be the same thing as carbon three. So now I need to add two more carbons to get up to the six carbons here. So where could I possibly put those carbons? The only option I have is to put both of them um, on carbon three. So what that's, what's that gonna look like? It's gonna look like this. Okay, so here's one carbon, here's another carbon. So that's a total of six carbons. Okay, let's uh, number the longest chain here. Let me do that in yellow. So remember, when you're numbering the longest chain, you want the ketone to have the lowest numbering, okay? Who cares about the methyl groups? That, that's not even a functional group. The ketone is the functional group, so we want that to be number two. So this is gonna be 3,3-dimethyl three, three, butan um, two own. Okay, so that's a butanone isomer. Now, sometimes you can have an ethyl group. So you see I'm adding two additional carbons here. So what would happen if I added an ethyl group on carbon three? You might be thinking, well, let's add a methyl group at carbon three, right? But when you do this, it extends the longest chain because now you have one, two, three, four, five carbons, okay? So this is a repeat of one of the ones I drew earlier. Um, so I, I won't identify that. This screen is getting really cluttered as it is, okay? So we've got um, one answer, two answers, three answers, four answers, five, and my sixth isomer is right here. Now some of these are chiral, so if you need to draw the R and label it as R and label the one that's S and label it as S, uh, do, do that. But I won't go over stereochemistry here, it's just a complicated enough problem as it is. So. Uh, thanks for watching. If you find any that I've missed, uh, go ahead and make some comments in the uh, 